Welcome to this video series where we're going to be doing a text file mock test in Delphi. So we're going to revise our text file work and there are two questions and this is going to be the video for the first question. A reminder that there is a link to the data files in the video description. So make sure that you go and download the data files, give the mock test a try and then you can come back and then see how you can get the right answers. So let's start off with question one. We have a client text file. So each client has their own text file. It has the client and then the client number. It contains all the payments that they've made for a beauty salon. So there you can see all the different payments. Each file contains multiple lines where each line is the total amount paid. For example, for client 561, you can see there that 350 was for the first appointment and then 625 for the second appointment. So let's go look at the first question. Complete the code for the BTNQ11 button that prompts the user for a new appointment payment that's been done for us and stored in a string variable and take the input of the client number via a spin edit. I'm assuming that's going to relate to the text file name. And then we must add the payment to the text file of that client based on the client's number. So determine the file name based on the spin edit. Now error checking to see if the file exists is required and we can assume that the client's text file has already been created. So that's a key point to take note of that the client's text file has already been created. Here is the graphical user interface. If we double click on this button, there we can see the code for the button Q11 and there's the payment that's already been done. So we need to go through those steps. The first step is to get the value of the client's number, which is going to be from that spin edit control. That's going to be important. So let's go get the client's number. So a client num, which is going to be our type integer. And we're going to get that from the spin edit. So our spin edit client and it's the value property that we're going to get that value from. And then we are going to have to create a text file. So we're going to call a my file variable of type text file. And we're going to start with the first step, which is assigning the file. So we want to connect our text file variable with the actual text file. It's going to be based on this client number. If you remember from the question, that is an example of a text file. So I'm going to copy that and show you that normally you would just do something like this. But that number over there is going to be dependent on whatever client number we get from the spin edit. So when I create this text file, I'm actually going to stop creating the text file over there. And then I'm going to add whatever the client number is. And then I'm going to add the rest of the text file extension and dot. But remember, this is an integer and we're going to create a whole string. So we need to convert this from an int to a string. So whatever client number we put in there, that's the text file number we're going to connect to. So that's the first step. Then when we are changing a text file, there are two options. We can either rewrite my file or we can append my file. So those are two options. We must do one or the other. The thing is in the question, it says we must assume that the text file has already been created, which means we don't have to create the text file. So therefore we don't have to, we don't have to rewrite it. So I will take that out. We are going to add onto it. So we're going to open it, append it, open it for editing. Then we are going to add to it, which is the right line command. We are right lining to the text file. What are we right lining? Well, whatever the payment is. Is it just that? You can see there, it's just the payment amount and it's already a string. So it's quite easy. We're just going to add S payment to the text file. And then once we are finished and done, we can close the file, my file. There we go. So if I come over here, you can see there is client 561. If I click on it, as you can see, there's a whole bunch of payments. You can see the last one is 680. If I run the code and we're going to add a payment of 450 and click OK. Voucher has been added. You should probably say something like payment. It's probably just a little mistake in the editing there. But if I go back to my text file and open up there, we go right to the bottom. You can see that 450 has been added. So therefore we know that it works. So let's go to the next question. So for the next question, we've got another text file called pricelist.txt and it's in that format. There's the service name followed by an open bracket, followed by the category, followed by a closed bracket, followed by a star character, followed by the price. So that's an example of a haircut that's in the hair category that's 300 Rand. So we can see that from the text file for priceless. We're going to complete the code for the button Q12 button that takes as input a category from the component. It could be hair, nails or wax or all, which has been done for us. The code then displays the service name and the category and price of all the services. So we've got the service name. If you remember, that's the first bit there. Then we've got the category name, which is that part there. And then we've got the price over there. So you can see that the price is displayed as a currency value. This means we are reading the values from the text file, extracting the different parts and displaying them. 
the items that they display will be based on which option they pick from the combo box component. So for example, if they pick nails, we must only show the nail category. So that's something to take note of. So let's first get it displaying everything. So we're going to go to the price list option over there and they've already got an input for the category. I'm going to make my text file. I'll type text file. I'm going to use an S line to extract the value as a string. And then I'm going to need the service, the category and the price. I'm going to extract those three things. So I'm going to make them S service, S category, and then my price will obviously be a real value. So I'm going to make R price of type real. And so let's go into our text file algorithm. They do mention that a message must be displayed if there's an error reading from the text file. So we have to do some sort of error checking. So let's go straight into our text file algorithm. So we're going to start off with if the file exists. And what's the name of the text file we're looking at? We're looking at the priceless.txt. That's the one over there, that one. So we're checking if the text file does not exist. In other words, if the file exists equals false, then we're going to do two things. We're going to show a message to say no file found, and we're going to exit. In other words, we're going to stop doing any further code. So if we get to this point, then we know that the text file does exist. And then we're going to go assign file. We're going to assign our text file variable to that text file list. I should probably put that gap away. So this is connecting the actual text File with my text file variable. So from this point on, we're going to just work with the text file variable. Then we want to read from that text file, which means we want to start at the very top, open it for reading. So we're going to say reset my file, which means open the text file and let us go right to the top so we can start reading it. And we don't know how many things are in the text file, how many lines. So we're going to say, while well, not end of file of my file. So we're going to keep going until we get to the end of the text file. So we say begin and end. This is my end of my while loop, just to indicate that. And then for, we are going to read one line at a time. So we're going to read from the text file and put the, each line individually into S line. So the code that goes here works with one line of the text file. And then the loop will do it for all the lines. And then at the end, after the loop is completed, we can close the file of my file. So that's my text file algorithm. Check if it exists, then show message and exit, assign the file, reset while not end a file, read line, and then close at the end. When we get to this point, S line is going to look something like this. It'll look like one line from a text file. So something like that would be an example of what is in S line. So it will look something like that. So we want to extract the three things. We want to extract the service, the category, and the price. So that's quite easy. So we're going to first get the service. And to get the service, we're going to copy from S line, starting at position one until we want to go from one until the position of the open bracket. So the position of the open bracket in S line is what we are looking for. But remember, we don't want to copy up until the open bracket. We want to go one before we're going to copy from the position of the open bracket minus one. So that will extract the word haircut. I'm going to delete all of that text. I can almost do a copy of all of this except for the minus one and just paste it over here. So what I'm doing here now is I'm going to delete from S line from one until the open bracket. So at this point, S line will look like this. It'll go up until that bracket and delete it. So that's what S line will look like. Now to get the category, which is my S cat, if I remember correctly, we are just going to copy from S line from position one, because remember, we deleted all that stuff. So it's from there until one before the open bracket. So it's almost exactly the same as this position of the close bracket, sorry. So go from one until the close bracket minus one. So that's how we're going to get the category. And then to get the price, well, the we actually don't even need to delete the rest. We can actually say we're going to copy from S line and we're going to take from wherever where the star is, go one after the star and just copy for a whole bunch of characters. So we want to find the position of the star in S line, but we don't want to start copying from there. We want to copy one after it. So we're going to say plus one. That's where we start in and we can make it like 10 characters. I'm assuming no item is going to be more than a couple of billion rand or dollars for a appointment at a hair salon. So I'm assuming that'll be fine. So that's going to copy from one until then. The problem with this, however, is copy returns a string and we've got this as a real. So we're going to convert this from a string to a float so that it can fit into our price. So we've extracted the service, we've extracted the category and we've extracted the price. Now let's just display all of it just so we can see what it looks like. And I think we display in a rich edit, rich data add, and we are first displaying if you look here, we first explain the service. So we can say S service. Then we're going to have a bit of a gap 
How do we get that gap? It's a hash nine. Then we're going to display the category as cat. And then another hash nine, I'm assuming, because there's a bit of a gap there. And then we're going to put the price. However, please take note that price is a real. So we're going to have to convert this. I'll put on a new line so you can read it clearly. We can say convert it from a float to string F. Display it as a currency. So there we go. if we do that, that's going to display everything. So let's have a look. If we go display process, there you can see it displays everything, all the hair, nails, and wax items. But we want to display only the ones that they've selected from the CMBX category, which we got from input over here. If you look there, there's the input. We got the category already. So when I do this display, I actually only want to do it if my category equals the input from the combo box. Then we can do this display. So if we run it, and I select nails, it displays only the nails. And if I select hair, it displays only the hair. But what about that all? I've got a funny feeling that's the next question. 1.3, modify the code so that if the user selects the all option, all the services will be displayed. So in that case, we want to display if the item matches or if S input equals to the text all. Then we display it. So let's put brackets around that and see if that works. So if the category matches, display it, if, or if the category equals an all, then we can do it. So that's the input from that one. So if we just select nails, it only does nails, but if I select wax, it only does wax, but if I select all, it does do all of them. There we go. So I think it's working. There we go. I think that's the question done. There we go. That's the end of question one. We, in our next video, we'll do question two of this text file mock test. If you need help with text files, make sure you check out our text file series on our channel at Mr. Long RTN Cat. We've got videos for that. Also follow us on TikTok at Mr. Long Education and our theory channel at Mr. Long Computer Terms. And remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long way.